is quickly running from the wooden grinding mortar in fear of Mother Yasuda, but who has been caught from behind by her who ran after him with greater speed to that Supreme Lord, Sri Damodara, I offer my humble obeisances. Anyone? Anyone? The kids. Shri Damodar Ashtakam Ki Jai Shri Madhbhagatam Kuntaraja Ki Jai Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmad Yasya Yato Nivayad Kitaratas Chate Suavikya Swarat Janmad Yasya Yatam Vayari Taratas Chate Suavikya Swarat Tine Brahma Hridaya Adikavaye Muyanti Yat Surayaha Tine Brahma Hridaya Adikavaye Muyanti Yat Surayaha Tejo Varimadam Yata Vini Mayo Yatra Trisagomisha Tejo Varimadam Yata Vini Mayo Yatra Trisagomisha Dham Nasvina Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Dham Nasvina Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi O Lord Shri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva. O my Lord Shri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality of Godhead. O all pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. 
How from our respectful obeisance is unto you? I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause. Beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Brahmaji. It's the only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge into the heart the of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representation. As one is bewildered by the illusory representation. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are real, unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Prujita Kaito Vutra. Dharma Prujita Kaito Vutra. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu. Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Paririshwarha. Sadyo Hridi Avarudya Tetra. Sadyo Hridi Avarudya Tetra. He completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. The highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees. This truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare. Such truth uproots the threefold. Such a truth uproots the threefold. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. And this beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Is itself is sufficient in itself for God realization. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam? As soon as one attends, he will submissively hear the message by of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpatarur galitam phalam. Nigama kalpatarur galitam phalam. Sukamakad amrita dravya samyutam. Sukamakad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata Bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata Bhagavatam rasam alayam. Mohur ahoraska bhuvibhavaka. Mohur ahoraska bhuvibhavaka. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Hmm? The Purana propounds the highest truth, hmm. which is understandable by those, which is, I'm sorry. Hmm. Oh, expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. Oh, expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature desire tree of Vedic literature. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literature. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, it has become even more tasteful. But this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Vidyantak Stohya Bhadrani. Vidyantak Stohya Bhadrani. Vidu Noti Suhit Satam. Vidu Noti Suhit Satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literature. To hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly through Bhagavad Gita. Is itself righteous activity. Is itself a righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. 
acts as best Christian friend and purifies his voice. He's constantly engaged in hearing of him. Nasta preshu bhadrishu. Nasta preshu bhadrishu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhakti bhavati naistiki. Bhakti bhavati naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from Bhagavatam and from the devotees, and from the devotees, <coughs> he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajastamo bhava, Tadarajastamo bhava, Kamalo By development of devotional service, by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material loss and avarice are diminished. And thus, material loss and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat bhakti yogata. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Mukta sangasya jayate. Mukta sangasya jayate. When these impurities are wiped away. When all these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyante sarva samsaya. Vidyante sarva samsaya. Vidyante jasya karmani. Vidyante sarva karmani. Dristaivat manishwari. Dristaivat manishwari. Thus. Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. That's a Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a Samsayam Samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a Samsha Samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth, Personality of Godhead. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth, the Personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotees. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotees. In Krishna consciousness. In Krishna consciousness. One can understand the science of Krishna. One can understand the science of Krishna. Shrimad Bhagavatam, Kanto 1, Chapter 17, Verse Number 12. Go vrishkat tavapadam strin. Sorabhya chatus pada. Mabhuvam stvadrisarastre. Rajnam. Krishna Nuvartinam. Translation He, Maharaj Pariksit, repeatedly addressed and questioned the bull thus O son of Surabi, who has cut off your three legs? In the state of the kings who are obedient to the laws of the Supreme Personality Godhead, Krishna, there is no one as unhappy as you. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The kings or the executive heads of all states must know the codes of Lord Krishna, generally Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, and must act accordingly in order to fulfill the mission of human life, which is to make an end to all miseries of material conditions. One who knows the codes of Lord Krishna can achieve this end without any difficulty. In the Bhagavad Gita, in a synopsis, we can understand the codes of Godhead. And in the Srimad Bhagavatam, the same codes are explained further. In a state where the codes of Krishna are followed, no one is unhappy. Where such codes are not followed, the first sign is that three legs of the representative of religion are cut off, and thereby all miseries follow. When Krishna was personally present, the codes of Krishna were being followed without Krishna. But as his absence, but in his absence, such codes are presented in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam for the guidance of the blind persons who happen to be at the helm of all affairs. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So here it says that Maharaj Pariksit repeatedly addressed and questioned the bull. Why is that? Because the bull 
was hesitant to answer. He's asking him specifically, who did this to you? Tell me. I'll kill that guy. The bull is not answering for a very profound reason. We'll get to that in the next couple of verses. But one thing is, is important. Well, many things are important in this, in this purport, but one thing is very, uh, let's say, jumps out of the page, and that is where the codes of Krishna are followed, no one is unhappy. Hmm. Could we say that about our congregation? Or at least our initiated devotees? Does anyone want to say anything? Are you happy or not happy? Sometimes people are not happy. Right? It's a good question to ask because it could reflect on the leaders or it could be due to an individual not following the regulative principles. And there are a whole bunch of regulative principles, but the main ones are things not to do and things to do. <clears throat> and above all, chanting our rounds, minimum 16 good rounds a day. So this question of happiness is really important because the nature uh, the soul is to be happy, and under Maya Biasad. So, if someone is unhappy, it's not natural. It's artificial. It's artificially imposed. Imposed, why? Well, it's not Krishna's fault. The first thing we have to eliminate is, is Krishna's fault. It's not his fault. Yeah. Uh, one time, I've told this before, but... Maybe some people haven't heard it. There was uh, one Indian man, a very clever guy, a very nice man, but he uh, listens too much to Mayavad stuff. And uh, he's, he was saying that, uh, well, he said, if I'm attracted to material things, it's not my fault. Uh, and I said, what? What do you mean it's not your fault? No, it's not my fault. It's Krishna's fault. I said, what? How can you say that? He said, it's, it's Shastric. I said, what? what? What kind of Shastra says that? And he quoted a verse. The rascal. And he said, uh, Krishna says in the 10th chapter, let me see what he says here. He says, Manas chasmi. Yeah, Indriana manas chasmi. So, the 10th chapter, 22nd verse. He quoted Shastra, right? Very clever guy, right? What does that say? He says, And of the senses, I am the mind. He said, So whatever I'm thinking, that's Krishna. <laughs> now, that is extremely clever, right? I said, No, no, no. I said, You have completely misunderstood that. He said, what do you mean? It's right there. Indriyana manas just me. Of the, mind, of the senses, I am the mind. I said, yeah. Just like of the senses, I am the eyes. So that, that function of that part of your body is uh, given to you and is maintained by Krishna, but you're the one deciding what you look at. In the same way, that mind, the functioning of it, is Krishna. Just like a computer is functioning because the hardware is in functional order by the manufacturer and the software is in functional uh, order by the manufacturer and the internet connection is functional by the provider. But you're the one choosing what you're going to look at. In the, in, the, in the computer and how you're going to use it. I said, so, so your interpretation of this verse is completely wrong. You're a nonsense. You know, you, you, you're a blasphemer. You want to blame Krishna for your weaknesses and your uh, lack of seriousness? That is nonsense. He's only providing you the equipment and making sure it's maintained in good order as long as you don't poison your body. But 
You're the one that's deciding how to use it. So you see, we, ought to be, we have to be able to uh, defeat these people because they're clever. And, and they're expert at misinterpreting things. See, that's, that's an expertise. Okay, so this, this point of you know, who is actually responsible, that's the question that's going to be answered in this 17th chapter of the first canto. And it's a fundamental uh, question. Who is actually responsible? So, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna gives a hint to how to understand this. And he, and he's, uh, this, this is only for those people who want to be liberated from the cycle of birth and death. If you don't want to be liberated from the cycle of birth and death, don't listen to this because you know, it won't make sense to you. But if you want to be, then you have to understand 12th chapter, verses 12 and 13. Advaista sarva bhutana maitra karana evacha nirmamo nirhankara sasante madhigachati. No, nirmamo nirhankara sama dukha sukha shanti. Dukha sami. Santusta satatam yogi yatat madhrita nishtraya mayapitamano buddhir yomad bhakta same priya. So this verse says, one who is not envious, but is a kind friend to all living entities who does not think himself a proprietor and is free from false ego, who is equal in both happiness and distress, who is tolerant, always satisfied, self-controlled, and engaged in devotional service with determination. His mind and intelligence fixed on me. Such a devotee of mine is very dear to me. So in the purport, Prabhupada says, coming to the point of pure devotional service, the Lord is describing the transcendental qualities of a pure devotee in these two verses. A pure devotee is never disturbed in any circumstances, nor is he envious of anyone, nor does a devotee become his enemy's enemy, he thinks. This person is acting as my enemy due to my own past misdeeds. So it is better to suffer than to protest. So someone will say, oh, well, that's, that's a pure devotee. I'm not a pure devotee, so you can't expect me to follow that. See, they always have an answer for everything. But no, you, we can't expect a person who has taken initiation, a person who has a bona fide spiritual master, a person who associates, hopefully, with good devotees, to be held to this standard. If someone is a meat eater, a gambler, a, a, a philanderer, etc., okay, we can ex not expect them to st maintain this standard. But someone who takes their vows and promises to follow them, we can expect it. And we should expect it. So, it's better to suffer than to protest. Who, who would accept such a thing? Nobody would. Would Donald, Donald J. Trump accept that? It's better to suffer than to protest? Would Biden accept that? It's better to suffer than to protest? No. But a devotee can accept that. Why? What's the difference? Because a devotee has complete faith in Krishna. And Krishna promises, my devotee will never perish. So, do we believe what Krishna says? Or do we not believe? And it'll be tested. Everything is tested. And the test gets harder and harder as one advances in devotional service. However, we should not be afraid of a test. If you prepare for the test, you can pass it. What's the preparation? Following the regulative principles, chanting 16 good rounds a day, regularly hearing Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. That's the test. That's, that's the preparation for the test. And if we prepare for the test, then we can pass it. And if we're not prepared properly, we're going to flunk it. And that means that we will not be happy. So, happiness is the criterion. Now, there's two types of people that are happy. The crazy guy and the pure devotee. The crazy guy is happy. You know, he's taking marijuana, he's sleeping till you know, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. He's engaged in all kinds of illicit activities, and he says, I'm happy. But he's not happy. He's basically uh, just 
bathing in his own stool and urine. But he thinks he's happy because he's crazy. But the devotee, the pure devotee, is happy. Why? Because he's not disturbed by these what what goes on in the material world. He understands the material world is not a place for a gentleman or a gentle lady. It's going to be always uh, part of uh, always uh, disturbed by uh, uh, demoniac elements. However. The devotee is not disturbed because he has complete faith in Krishna. That is the point. And the position of a devotee is determined by their faith. So a pure devotee has complete faith. A, uh, in other words, a Uttama Adhikari. A Madhyanama Adhikari has base, faith based on scriptures, but it can be sometimes shaken. And the Kanista uh, Rikai has little faith and it can be very easily shaken. Just like this person uh, who tells me that, you know, it's all Krishna's fault because he says he is the mind. <laughs> well, that means he has no faith. That means he doesn't listen carefully to Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam. That means he is easily diverted from the truth. So the rest of this purport explains that. In the Srimad Bhagavatam 10.14.8, it is stated, Tate nukampam sutamikshamano bunjana evatma kritam vipakam. Whenever a devotee is in distress or has fallen into difficulty, he thinks that it is the Lord's mercy upon him. He thinks, thanks to my past misdeeds, I should suffer far, far greater than I am suffering now. So it is by the mercy of the Supreme Lord that I am not getting all the punishment I am due. I am just getting a little by the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, he is always calm, quiet, and patient despite many distressful conditions. A devotee is also always kind to everyone, even to his enemy. Nirmama means that a devotee does not attach much importance to the pains and trouble pertaining to the body because he knows perfectly well that he is not the material body. He does not identify with the body. Therefore, he is freed from the conception of false ego and is equipoised in happiness and distress. Okay, now we know why the devotee is not disturbed, right? He is tolerant and he is satisfied with whatever comes by the grace of the Supreme Lord. He does not endeavor much to achieve something with great difficulty. Therefore, he is always joyful. He is completely, he is a completely mystic because he is fixed in the instructions received from the spiritual master and because his senses are controlled, he is determined. He is not swayed by false arguments because no one can lead him from the fixed determination of devotional service. He is fully conscious that Krishna is the eternal Lord so no one can disturb him. All these qualifications enable him to fix his mind and intelligence entirely on the Supreme Lord. Such a standard of devotional service is undoubtedly very rare, but a devotee becomes situated in that stage by following the regulative principles of devotional service. Furthermore, the Lord says that such a devotee is very dear to him, for the Lord is always pleased with all his activities in full Krishna consciousness. So the opposite of these things that are described about a pure devotee will lead to becoming envious, having friends and enemies, and thinking oneself the proprietor, the doer, having a highly inflated false ego that is impenetrable by any good points of Shastra and who is usually never happy because they always find something wrong. They don't see anything good. And if there's something good, they belittle it. And they say, oh, that was an accident. That person is not really that way. And they're not tolerant. They're not satisfied. And they're not self-controlled. And they don't engage in devotional service with determination. They might do a little bit of devotion, but not with determination, 
without any gaps. So now we understand the two things. What is a pure devotee and what leads to not being a pure devotee. And the goal of Krishna consciousness is for everyone to become a pure devotee. Prabhupada is not holding back any information that is vital for becoming a devotee, a pure devotee, and thus, thus becoming happy eternally and going back to the spiritual world. It's our, it's our nature. It's who we are, really. So this, uh, this dilemma of not being who we are is a symptom of Kali Yuga. In Kali Yuga, there's so much false propaganda being taught in schools and in, even in temples, right? Uh, completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. What does that mean? That means that people are asking for something from Krishna. You don't have to ask him for anything. He knows what you need. He knows what you don't need. But what we should be spending our time on is glorifying Krishna and learning more and more about Krishna and becoming more determined to follow strictly the regulative principles. Why? Because it says it very carefully, very, very emphatically here, Prabhupada says, all these qualifications enable him to fix his mind and intelligence entirely on the Supreme Lord. Such a standard of devotional service is undoubtedly very rare, but a devotee becomes situated in that stage by following the regulative principles of devotional service. That's the point. You want to be successful. You want to be happy. You don't want to be disturbed by anything. Follow the regulative principles strictly and chant and chanting 16 good rounds a day is, is the fifth and most point, poignant regulative principles because the holy name alone is enough to deliver you from the cycle of birth and death and go back to Godhead. It's that powerful. One does not even have to be initiated, but because people are so lowborn in this age of Kali, it's highly recommended by the Acharyas that one become initiated. Why? Because an artapasama, when one is initiated, you have someone and, and, and others that are observing you and will help you overcome any weaknesses that you have and any bad habits that you have. That's extremely important because a blind person cannot see and we are all blinded by the false ego. See, this, this false ego is something that's not real, but yet we're convinced it's real. I am this body. This body is born in this country or this particular family or this particular ethnicity or this particular nationality. And everything related to the body is mine. This car, this house, this family, this thing, that thing. So all that constructs this false ego, and that is what keeps us in the material nature and what makes us unhappy. Okay, so these are some points uh, from this verse today. Uh, are there any questions? Yes. The mic comes to him. The person that was quoting who says that Krishna is the force. And Speak that into the mic. For the verse, the person was quoting who said uh, that Krishna is the force and that's why Krishna is responsible for his uh, he's deeds. The, he is the mind. He said. Krishna he's says, Indriyanam manas chasme, of all the senses I am the mind. He is the mind. So is there... Uh, are there any specific verses which says that uh, it's the free will of the person which actually directs that person to do all the misdeeds, it's not Krishna? Yes, are many. There, <laughs> are there anything that you can share? Okay, yes. All right, Bhagavad Gita, of course. We begin with Bhagavad Gita and then there's Srimad Bhagavatam. It's in the 18th chapter, verse number... Verse number... Touch to see to talk, Guru. It 
Tite Gyanam Aikya Aikya Tam Guyad Guyataram Maya Vimris Yaita the Se Sena Yatach Chasi Tatakuru. So Krishna says, Thus I have explained to you, meaning Arjuna, knowledge still more confidential. Deliberate on this fully, and then do what you want to do. There's a song by uh what is it? Nonsense. Uh, uh, I forget his name. It, it was all about uh, yeah. do it, do it, do it. Right. I forget. The, I'm glad I forgot his name. Yeah, it's Brown. What's his, what was his first Bobby name? Bobby Brown. No, not Bobby Brown. Anyway, that was his song. Yeah, do it, do it, do it, do it. He kept repeating it over and over again. So Krishna is saying, do what you want to do, Arjuna. He doesn't say, you must do what I tell you to do. Right? The Lord has already explained to Arjuna the knowledge of Brahma Bhutta, that is, how to be a liberated soul. One who is in Brahma Bhutta condition is joyful. You see, we said happiness. He never laments, nor does he desire anything. That is due to confidential knowledge. Krishna also discloses knowledge of the supreme of the su super soul. This is also Brahman knowledge, knowledge of Brahman, but it is superior. Hear the words Yatach Chasi Tatakuru. As you like, you may act. Indicate that God does not interfere with the little independence of the living entity. Okay? In Bhagavad Gita, the Lord has explained in all respects how one can elevate his living conditions. The best advice imparted to Arjuna is to surrender unto the super soul seated within his heart. By right discrimination, one should agree to act according to the order of the super soul. That will help one become situated constantly in Krishna consciousness, the highest perfectional stage of human life. Arjuna is being directed, directly ordered by the personality of Godhead to fight. Surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead is in the best interest of the living entities. It is not for the interests of the Supreme. Before surrendering, one is free to deliberate on this subject as far as the intelligence goes. That is the best way to accept the instruction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Such instruction comes also through the spiritual master, the bona fide representative of Krishna. In other words, before you get initiated, you can ask any question you want. You can take your time. You can see if it works or doesn't work. You can examine the person or persons that you're taking instruction from. You can do all those things and take your time. No one says you have to hurry up. But once you accept, no more arguing, no more doubts, you simply follow. So therefore, take your time. Be sure you're not making a mistake. Get all the answers to your questions. Right? We don't say you have to take initiation. You know, No. But once you do, that means you, you did a Thorough vetting. You vetted the persons who were instructing you, and you vetted Krishna himself. And you're absolutely sure this is my path, and I'm going to take instructions. Because the problem is, due to false ego, nobody wants to take instructions. Right? But as soon as you convince, I can trust these people, and I can trust Krishna, I can trust Prabhupada, and I can trust his representatives as long as they follow also. If they break the regulative principles, then you know there's something seriously wrong, but it's not Krishna's fault. They made it, and any, at any moment you can break the principles. Any moment, even after you're initiated, right? So, but people who are determined not to do it, they are called pure devotees. And they don't do it. And even if they do it, they can be forgiven if they continue in devotional service. But if they continually break them, then you know that the person is very low standard and they, they're not qualified to be a guru. Okay. I have a question, Maharaj. Okay. In the same context? Yeah. Um, so, uh, regarding the following, or, or strictly following or not, uh, anything right yeah. so if uh, when we kids when we are kids or maybe generally kids the parents give some instructions to kids to follow 
So for example, um, okay, you do study sincerely every day. You will be definitely succeed do in you, your do, educational life. Do you, word, do you actually use the word sincerely? I don't think so. You say, uh, you must sincerely. do your homework. Oh, okay. Sincerely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You must so do sincere. your homework. You don't say sincerely. I mean, sincerely is like a soft word. Yeah. You, know, you, say, right. you, have, you have to do your homework. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. But uh, in general, the, I'm giving that context or analogy, like uh, even the kids, some kids follow really sincerely, like they, and then may they succeed. No, they follow but not all. Strictly. <laughs> strictly, okay. So, yeah. They, they, if you give they them a follow chance, strictly. they won't follow. If you give them a chance, they won't follow. Yeah. So some of them don't follow, some of them follow, and then they succeed. But that time we can say that, okay, they are not matured enough, so they have to rely on your parents, just follow it, just follow it, okay? You don't understand because you are not that matured enough to see what is good or bad for you. Because a lot of people want to do something which is not good for them, like kids especially, right? But similarly, if we do the same thing, like as a devotee or something, who are on the path of devotional service, we also don't understand a lot of things that, okay, which is good. I mean, sometimes we know, still we don't follow it. But as a spiritual master, as a, so ultimately it comes down, boils down to the realization of an individual person, right? So even if a kid, he got realized, no, this is something I have to do in my life, I have to do this. This is the one, only thing for me to be in success life. So they seriously, they took it seriously and they just do it. Similarly, in case of the devotional service also, if you have some that kind of realization that, okay, this is then they will take seriously. So I'm saying that realization and taking something seriously is something very closely related. Unless you have realization, you probably do, sometimes you don't do, that might get deviate. So, but getting realization is tough, right? So it's kind of chicken and how do we get that realization then to okay, do something? Well, let, let's look at Srila Prabhupada. How did he establish Krishna consciousness in the United States? He comes here with nothing, basically. I mean, obviously he has the first canto translated, and he has uh, some dal and rice and other things. This is his, in a suitcase, right? He's got about 40 rupees, right? He comes to the United States. He doesn't really know anyone, just that one person in Butler, Pennsylvania, which is an obscure town. And uh, so how did he establish Krishna consciousness? People, People don't really know it's a guru, and they don't know all this stuff that we're reading, right? So they have a vague idea of guru because there were all these false gurus that had come to the United States before. So if you ask those first devotees how they became convinced to live in a temple, follow regulative principles, you'll see. It was only because of the personality of Prabhupada. He was affectionate, he was fatherly, he was giving, he uh, didn't in any way violate the principles of Krishna consciousness, and uh, he was forgiving, very forgiving. You know, if we tell you, if I even begin to tell you some of the things that those first devotees did to Prabhupada, you, your hair would stand on end, right? But he forgave. So this is the way people become convinced. They don't want to, you think somebody wants to wake up early in the morning, take a bath, come to Mangalarati, chant Hare Krishna, and then do everything else that they have to do. You know, no, they don't, they don't want to do that. So what convinces a person to do that? Well, what convinced those devotees was Prabhupada's personality, his person. The fact that they could see he comes to the United States, he doesn't have anything. <laughs> he's, he's preaching something that nobody wants to follow. Right? But it was because of his love, his devotion for Krishna, and sharing it with those first devotees, and his forgiveness, and his kindness, and his simplicity. You know, they saw he had nothing. He had no furniture, nothing. Right? But yet, he was determined to follow his guru's instruction. So, if you don't have a guru, maybe you have parents that are like gurus, 
And they're telling you, you've got to get a job, you've got to do good in your studies, you've got to make money, right? That's their guruship, usually. Sometimes they say you have to be honest, you shouldn't lie, you shouldn't cheat. But most of the time, they're insisting on, especially in India, that you get a, you get a good education, you get a good job, you get a car, you get a wife, you get a house, you get this, you get that, you know, and you take care of us also. And, and, uh, and we might not like the person you marry, so you have to divorce them also and get another one, you know. So these are all the things that, you know, create problems. <laughs> they're, they're gurus in a sense, but not actually pure devotees, usually. I'm not saying about everybody, but that's, that's so that guruship is not bona fide. The guruship is bona fide is in the following Prabhupada, you see. And Prabhupada was giving, he was kind, he was tolerant, he was forgiving, he was affectionate, and he understood the weaknesses of people and gave them the right medicine. So you might accept it, you might not accept it though. Even though it's so perfect, you might not accept it. That's a tragedy. But a lot of people did accept it. And uh, they're happy that they did. Happiness is the thing. That's the sign that you actually are following and that you are getting the real juice. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj Ji. Yeah. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj Ji. Uh, I have a question from uh, Shikshastakam. Uh, Shikshastakam Sloka. Uh, in seventh sloka, uh, where Yuga Yitam Ni Every moment is like twelve. Every so moment is like two years, twelve years, feeling your separation. Yeah. Is that particular reason why twelve was used? That's because it's a long time. Ah, okay. Right? He didn't say 12 <laughs> seconds or 12 uh, minutes or 12 days. He said 12 years, that's a long time. Okay. Yeah. He could have said 1,200 years and he would say, oh, that's too much, you know. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to live 1,200 years. <laughs> See? Yeah. So 12 years is a long time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a long time also. Yeah. Okay. Everybody wants fast food, right? <laughs> they don't want to wait 12 years to get their uh, burger. <laughs> yeah, talking, about, uh, Maharaj, talking about the mind, that guy, you know, obviously. <laughs> He's a real guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's stuck in I mean, no, it's, it's shocking. It's shocking how they can be so clever. So there's a, there's a, way, to, there's a way of understanding. Just be closer to my. Uh, there's, there is another way of understanding. What Krishna says is the mind. It means that it, the mind is leading the senses, right? The mind is the leader of the senses. So that means, and then you say, Krishna said, manamana bhava, you know, it means that give your mind to me, or keep me in your mind, in that sense. So the mind should be, it should be accepted as Krishna. In other words, in other words, we follow what Krishna is saying. Krishna said what is right and what is wrong. Well, that's not what this person did. He wasn't following what Krishna was saying. But I'm saying the way I was explaining to him, because he obviously is he's crazy, but, or maybe... Uh, He's ignorant, but uh, when Krishna says... No, he's actually a very nice man. He's a big well, donor also. He's well, a big donor. And, and he, he always... Any time I see him, he's always talking about Rama and Krishna and Radharani and things <laughs> like that. I'm not kidding you. He's, he's actually a very nice man. And if you didn't know what I just said, you'd think he's a devotee, a pure devotee. But no. See, he had this misconception in his mind. Yeah, but basically he's ignorant. Well, he's he's mixed. He listens to a lot of Mayavadis, also. 
he also listens to, you know, he, he, he's watched the, the Prabhupada movie and everything, and, you know. And, he, and you talk to him, you know, he's, he's a pure devotee, you know, he says his goal in life is to live in Vrindavan the rest of his life, and, and <laughs> things like that, you know. But then Krishna says clearly in Bhagavad Gita that mind need to be controlled. So he's controlling his mind? No, he's not. Exactly. Okay, he, he has bad habits also. Like for example, he's got a, uh, a business in which he sells beef jerkies <laughs> and, and beer and other things, you know, and then lottery tickets and cigarettes. Okay. So, I mean, look, India is the source of everything, including Mayavad philosophy, including all kinds of... Uh, hedonistic philosophies and all kinds of nonsense. Prabhupada said the worst and the, the best Yeah, it's the, the best and the worst. worst. So, you know, you, you come out of India, you, you come with that legacy, with that, that influence in your mind. So, without, I mean, it's clear, without bona fide guru, the first guru is Krishna, and his number one representative is the members of the Parampara, and especially Prabhupada, so, unless you have contact with such people, all these things will not be eliminated. They're very subtle things. Mm. You know, misconceptions are very subtle things. And it's almost impossible for a person themselves to get rid of these things because it's related to the false ego. It's not, pos no, it's not possible. <laughs> not possible on their own, no. Mm. Yeah, okay. So thank you very much. Well, glory is the Prabhupada ki So the answer to your question.